welcome to the NBC Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silverquill. These head-to-body ratios confuse and upset me. Oh, um, why is that? Because everyone should be falling over. But they don't. Uh, anyway, also joining us is Totera. What? I'm not Totera. I drank this weird potion, and now I'm Silverquill. Really, no? Yes, can't you tell by my glorious feathers and this beak I have? Which, for some strange reason, how can you live with this beak? I don't know. Silver, explain yourself. You go to war with the with the beak you have, not the one you want. <laughs> and also joining us today, special guest, Matt Munchkin. I don't have a special funny thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Usually <laughs> in this kind of scenarios, we make fun of Silver. <laughs> ah, okay. Or, you know, you two make fun of me. <laughs> Well, o- only when you get sued for identity theft, by the way. I'm taking you for everything you've got. Wait, what? <laughs> Mr. I'm Silverquill. Next, next you'll be telling me you're Spartacus. <laughs> I'm Spartacus. Not my fault. Pinky gave me a potion. I'm Spartacus and so's my wife. <laughs> Life of Brian quote, anyone? No? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at the bright side of life. But anywho, in this episode... Uh, we are going to review Season 1, Episode 1 of Pony Life. Uh, in this episode, Pinkie Pie's friends uh, help her audition for a television cooking competition. But when the rest of the main six get caught in a sticky situation, Pinkie has to audition all, her, all on her own. Starting right there, there's a few things that don't feel right. Like television. Like, hmm, is it me or does that not sound right? Well, I mean, they have televisions in Equestria. Do they? They do. Though it's very limited. It's in Manhattan. It is uh, a big Jumbotron TV. And it featured Pinkie Pie during the uh, uh, Shadow Play. Ah, all right, then. It, it just seems so off, like, just reading those words. But anywho, uh, before we officially get right to it, our first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well... This was certainly different. It was, I think, fun, silly, but very frantic energy. Fast-paced. And honestly, the greatest fascination is watching uh, fans react and uh, seeing who will roll with it, who's like, hashtag not my pony, and who's just like, I'm waiting for the U.S. release, whenever that may be. (laughs) Wait, it's not Uh, available in the U.S.? No, nope. it's in Canada. Yes, I get to watch it before all of you. Uh, no spoilers, please. You can sing it with the song of your people. <laughs> and what might that be? I d- I'm not Canadian. Yeah, he, he, can, he can't sing the Canadian national anthem. I'm American. All we can sing is, oh, God, we're sorry. <laughs> we're so sorry. <laughs> okay. Anywho, um, Tara, what do you think? I mean, I'm still mixed about it when I first saw it. I mean, it was all, it's all right, I guess. I just, it's so fast paced and everything's happening so fast. And it's, I'm just sitting here, I'm like, what's going on? And even, I watched it like three times and I'm like, what? Oh, wow. All right, all right. And Maddie, what about you? Yeah, I made a video about my thoughts on. Um, pony life uh, but I think when I first watched it I didn't really have high expectations for it but I think I was trying to watch it without constantly comparing it to G4 because it's not G4 let's face it it's it's a completely separate thing it's more of a I would say it was a satire of itself kind of thing and I was trying to figure out what it means to to me. Like it's it moves fast, it's high energy, it, it's high on sugar, whatever. But I was just thinking, why does this exist? Why? All right, just then. just why? <laughs> but it, it was yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, we will yeah. discuss it and probably we'll find out why. But anywho, as for me, this episode, or this series in general, you know what? You guys are echoing what I'm saying because 
Why does this exist? Why does it look this way? Wait, is this is it this short? I thought it was twenty two minutes long, and I watched it twice, and I still couldn't really get into it. I I was, uh, like for a better word, um, disinterested. Like that's bad, but you know, maybe as we go through it, we'll uh find some good sides, you know. But anywho, uh, if you guys have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So anywho, uh, let's start off with the intro. The intro's not bad. Uh, the song is catchy. But do you guys remember how it goes? Nope. Wait, you, you want me to sing? No, Are no. <laughs> Are you insane, Norman? Norman, why do you hate everyone's ear parts? <laughs> because I can hear it in one ear and I want them to burst. Well, it starts with, it's a sweet life, a little bit messy life, a little bit hectic life, yada yada. Really? Yes. Wow. That's... Living life in our own way, hee hee, we're freaky. <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> uh, um, oh, did your ear actually burst? <laughs> uh, what? Oh, okay. I can't hear anything now. <laughs> oh, but so, but anywho, we start off the episode with a uh, bird's eye view of Ponyville. Ponyville looks... Hmm. Pink. Yes, that is true. Actually, actually, that's the water. What did they put in the water? Why is there water? That's the first part. Like, since when did Ponyville live on an island? <laughs> hey, admit it. No, no, Philly is an island, but Eugene is a city. <laughs> oh, God. But anywho, we join our heroes in Sugar Cube Corner uh, with Pinkie Pie making a huge ice cream. And, uh,. She blunders and it falls over and yeah, everybody has a good laugh. So we're introduced to the quote-unquote gimmick for this season and that's potions. So we have a lot of potions and stuff. The group asks what they're going to do and Pinky just says, Oh, I'm going to practice to join the Bake Off TV show thingy. She drinks a potion and bumps it with... Rainbow Dash so she can mind melt with her sharing information that way. It's very fast and efficient. And she's all cheery and helpful, yet Twilight panics because the competition itself is considered to be hectic and very, very, um, let's just say, not fun. And with that, I'm going to pause here. So Silver, what do you think? Well, let's clarify to a few terms. Pinky is getting ready for the Royal Jelly Juggernaut. And it's a competition hosted by Princess Celestia. And according to Pinky's flashback, co, co- uh, judges Princess Celestia and Princess Celestia. Yeah. It's like, well, that's a lot of Celestias. Meanwhile, Luna's off to the side. I'm good. I don't want to be in this anyway. <laughs> what we got here is a crash course in ponies, but. We don't really get to know Rainbow or Fluttershy right away. And there was that moment where Pinky is so excited that she swells up like a balloon and bursts. And I saw that I was like, oh my god! They killed Pinky! Why would she kill Pinky? And then she reforms and screams and then and, and the batter explodes and she rides it out like a boss, which means she's just coasting like nobody's business. And like, oh, okay... Okay, I guess that's a thing now. Pinky just explodes at random. Okay, I'm sane. I'm totally with it. I'm hip, yo. Well, unfortunately, it's just a simple case of everybody is uh, is frantic and there's a manic energy to it. And you just got to roll with it. You just got to accept, Norman. Why won't you accept? I'm not saying that I didn't. But anywho, um, Tara, what do you think? Well, I mean, for me, I mean, like, looking at the back, the way the backgrounds are drawn, it kind of gives me that feeling that it looks almost, um, how do I say this? It reminds me of that one show, The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, where it's basically the same thing, just runs around and so much, uh, slapstick, I guess you could say. Why do you hurt me so much? I seen that thing when I was a kid and I enjoyed it. Really? I was, what? Oh, God, I was a kid. Leave me alone. <laughs> no, Norman, you must graduate to Sonic's at AM. 
I already did. Like, I was, I love that show, and I was disappointed with the end. Yes, the ending was disappointing. Yeah, they introduced Metal Sonic. Oh wow! Can't wait to see Metal Sonic in action. And then it was cancelled. Few years later, I'm still bitter. A few, Norman. I'm I'm way older than you, and even I think it's been more than a few years. Stop your denial. <laughs> yeah, there, Norman. Continue but um, on. huh? Continue on. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it's like there's so much happening. It's like you see everyone coming at once uh, except Fluttershy, which she's kind of quiet most of the time. Sorry, Silver. Mm. <laughs> But so much is happening. It's like, yeah, we first see them all and Pinky's making the Sunday next, you know, they're drinking potions and they're making Celestia's like, whoa, okay, we're jumping the gun already. And then I feel like it's too that here Celestia isn't like, yeah, she is still princess, but you don't really see her being much of a um, royalty in this one. It's more like, yeah, I'm a judge and I'm going to judge you making a cake for a show, but that's it. I'm just, I'm not a ruler of a quest or anything. Yeah. And one more thing. It's, a local event for Ponyville TV station thingy. So it's either really popular with the masses or the Celeste doesn't have anything to do. Yeah. Or maybe she got rid of Mir Mir and she replaced her. Oh, wow. Anywho, uh, Maddie, what do you think? I've seen this episode once. Uh... <laughs> You know, seeing, seeing Pinkie Pie explode like over inflated balloon, that's something we've seen before. So in G4, she has done that in some episodes, but not like properly like boom exploded, but like inflated like a balloon and then floated away. I can't remember exactly what episode that was, but yeah, she did do that. Oh, simple ways. Thank you. The, the thing that is strange is that... This episode shows that it's not just Pinkie Pie that has this kind of fourth wall break or this meta kind of humor, self-awareness thing. All the characters seem to have that. And tone-wise, I guess, yeah, that can work. But because we're so used to that being embodied in one character in G4, it was very jarring. So it feels like, okay, this is obviously some kind of... This must be how Pinkie Pie sees G4. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know? Well, the, the battle with T-Rex and Discord must have been really interesting for her point of view. <laughs> Happy sparkly time! Oh, boys. But anyway, I'm going to continue on. So, with that, uh, Pinkie Pie starts practicing. And, yeah, she makes a mess of the kitchen and... I just have to question her hygiene. Like, she doesn't... How do I put this? Her cooking skills here have dropped to questionable. Like, since when did she mess up the kitchen this bad? Oh boy. So, anywho, with that, the whole group now decides to help Pinky with her entry by, uh, well, giving her some word of advice uh, from Twilight saying that you need to have a plan, uh, a plan of attack. And then Rainbow Dash says, oh, you should find a way to add some possess to your sting uh, from rarity to giving you a little uh, makeover and whatnot. I don't think so. There's anything for Rain, sorry, Applejack and Fluttershy. But still, uh, the f- group of friends are trying to help. And Pinkie Pie here just takes it in stride and kind of in one ear and out the other. The group kind of uh, hopes for the best and, well, Pinky being Pinky, kind of mess up and, yeah, make a huge mess that everybody is stuck in. And with that, Pinkie Pie says, okay, you guys, uh, I'm going to go to the audition. You guys, good luck and have fun because uh, that looks like fun. Bye. And with that, we end with part one. Uh, I, I guess I just have to ask, um, well, Tara, what do you think? I mean, honestly, like, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. That's, like, this is all over the place. Because, I mean, I know it's a bit harsh comparing it to G4. Because, you know, I've been watching and growing up with that. 
But it's like, you know, you, usually you think that they would respect Pinky for wanting to do a cook-off the way she is. What, but I do understand, you know, about the hygiene. You know, you always got to keep a kitchen clean. And when Pinky's like, my only strategy is to have fun. Twilight's like, yeah, no, I'm not having that. <laughs> <laughs> but you think, or you remember when Pinky's cooking. A good example is uh, season one when she was cooking in the bakery, was it? I think so. A lot of songs were written about it. I think it was for Apple Bloom. What was it again? Oh, uh, cupcakes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in that, you can see her cook. And that's okay. Even though it was in a montage, you didn't see her uh, mess things up. And I think there was one in season 8 or 7, something like that. And yeah, she cooks well in this. <sighs> I mean, I will give it some credit that when Rarity gave her advice on how to help Pinky, and you hear it's all black and white, and you hear the saxophone, only to see that Pinky was the one playing. It's like, okay, I got a little chuckle out of that one. Yeah, uh, boys. But anywho, uh, still, sorry, um, Maddie, what do you think? I think with um, showing how messy Pinky Pie is when she's cooking, it, it's like creativity is messy. I think that's what maybe they were trying to go for. I can see that. There's a point where she's being so messy she's not paying attention to what she's actually doing. There's having fun and then there's being careless. I know they're trying to do it as a joke. Like, okay, uh, like, amp it up to 11 so this is the scenario and this is what they have to do to solve the problem. But it feels like they're just doing things just to put them in a situation. Like how Silver said when... Yeah, reviewing Applejack, like... Oh, there's no problem with Applejack. What do we do? We make her stubborn and dumb. It feels that way, but for the rest of the group. But anywho, uh, Silver, what do you think? Well, let's see here. I mean, Pinky's been maybe a little messy in the show, but not to this extent. I've always just sort of wondered, what what was up? She's going between stations, getting from the race. doo doo boo pastries. Are you a death bot? I am a robot. You will have my pastries. Resistance is futile. Oh, well. <laughs> so that okay. was just sort of random. But in talking with a friend, one of the, the big turnoffs that I've heard from folks is that Twilight immediately goes to, we have to stop her. From a place of love, we have to foil her dream. Now, granted, it's not much of a dream as it's just a, well, a diversion, really. This isn't, oh, I can launch my career off this, or, oh, I want to impress the princess and bring joy to everyone. No, she's just doing this for giggles. Ergo, what's the tension? Usually, you we're invested because a character, if they fail, they've got something to lose. What does Pinky have to lose if she doesn't make this competition? Will she be laughed out of the baking community? Will, they, will she have to turn in her po- uh, party pony card? Can Pinky bake her way out of this brutal, brutal broadcast? I guess you'll find out soon enough. Tune in next time for the exciting episode of Pinkie Pie Makes a Mess in Her Kitchen. I don't know. I'm not good at improv. <laughs> I'm not good at improv. Leave me alone. It's okay. <laughs> I can't. That's what makes some of the best improv. Yeah. I go after people in my improv. <laughs> just, just ask Torterra. Yes. <laughs> Yes. But uh, but also the whole part one thing was like, wait, what, part one? What, is this a to be continued? Because I know the next thing isn't isn't uh, Princess Probs part two. And there was like, oh, wait, no, they're starting part two immediately. What was the point of that? This, oh, wow. Uh, you know what? I'm going to hold my tongue and save that for the end. Uh, but anywho, uh, let's continue on. So you're in talk- part... You're, t- you're talking very eloquently for someone who's holding his tongue. I mean... If I did that, I'd say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plus, Norm, you should know by now that Silver never holds his tongue. Whenever he has to talk about something, he'll talk about it. Should we go back to the time where we talked about Cadence and Shining Armor? <laughs> oh, yes, let's talk all about them and my 57 dissertation on why I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, uh, I think we already had a discussion about that one. But anywho, carrying on. So we oh, see... I can carry on. <laughs> uh, but anywho, we see our heroes trapped in some dough. And Pinkie Pie heads to the 
um, competition. We see two other judges with Princess Celestia judging the competition. And uh, Pinky starts off easy but gets nervous because the pressure that is put on her by her friends. So basically, she messed things up. While going back to our other heroes, they try to eat their way out yet are full and ready to burst. I believe there's a subsection of that in DeviantArt. Mm. Yes. Carrying on. Ah, yes, I, there are certain things we one dares not talk about. Mm. No. Nope. Look mm-hmm. away, lest ye go mad. Let's not and yeah. say we did. Yep. <laughs> but anywho, we join Pinkie Pie trying to bake and failing at every part. Well, kind of. Somehow she managed to create a masterpiece. To me, that looks like pudding. I got no idea what you guys think. And Princess Celestia takes a bite and says that it's awful. Awfully great! And she wants Pinkie Pie to join in the show because, well, I, I, I think she kind of made an impression out of uh, them. And her friends uh, come by and apologize that uh, they've been putting pressure on her and not really giving her the chance to bloom. And with that, they drink more potions and Pinkie Pie transforms into her friends. Episode ends. Wow, that was the quickest summary ever. Yeah, wow, yeah. <laughs> you know, this review is much longer than the thing that we watched. Well, that's that's because we're giving equal time to all the participants. <laughs> Fluttershy! <laughs> what? Fluttershy? She was in this? Really? I... She got a line. Yeah, just one line, and that's it. And I feel like the fact that she said it feels not good, it's like, oh, you have no idea, sister. <laughs> uh, but anywho, let's wrap it up. And, well, Silver, what do you think in final thoughts? Well, okay. One, I wonder if Celestia knows Pinky and the others in this universe because she doesn't really address them as, well, someone she's encountered before. It is very possible that in this universe, this version... Pinky is just a participant, nothing more. And Twilight is just a random alicorn. Why not? <laughs> well, random alicorn? Wow. I, 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 hmm. That's similar to fanfiction pony number 10. It's a randocorn, also known as Mary Sue. Oh, that was a window for me to say something in Mary Sue voice. I completely missed that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not to <all> worry. <laughs> yes, the Sue of the Marys is upon us. There can only be one. And yet there are like 20. There can only be one. Oh, she's a Highlander then. <laughs> oh. Hooray! Someone oh. got the reference. <laughs> oh. oh my god, oh. Did, did Mary Sue uh, decapitate a bunch of OCs? Oh god. <laughs> no, no, wait, 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 wait. They're on <laughs> holy ground, so they can't. <laughs> oh, but, what, but what worship is that, I wonder? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, really? Really, Silver, anything more? Yeah, random transformation potion. Is, sure, why not? Just impersonate anyone you like. That'll, I'm sure that won't cause any sort of identity crisis for people. Not <laughs> to don't, mention... Don't look at me. <laughs> well, you know, the, you've seen one Torterra, you've seen them all. Oh, yeah, true that. <sighs> oh, Norman, get joining me on the Poke Prejudice. <laughs> you know, I, I feel special for one day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you can. Are you shiny? Yes, I'm a special kind of shiny. Uh, little snowflake. Oh, did you just snowflake at the Torterra? Don't patronize me. <laughs> you know, you know. Honestly, I'm I'm digging the Digimon nowadays. I don't know. <laughs> I must uh, see that reboot. But I'm off topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. I honestly, I actually could track what was happening in this episode. Maybe that just means I'm way too hyper minded, or or I just turned my brain off and just rolled with it. Okay, sure. There's another mountain of dough uh, swallowing them up twice, in fact. And Pinky knows how to ride it like a boss. I can see that being her morning commute. Just <laughs> throw out a huge amount of batter and ride the wave across town. And the, and the flies of Ponyville love her so. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Uh. And we also didn't cover that Twilight shatters. Pinkie Pie explodes, Twilight shatters. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's one scene where Twilight becomes a cat. That's adorable. Oh, yes. yeah. It, she hisses like but, a cat. 
and, and arches and <laughs> I always wondered I always wondered if if Twilight and Starlight got a bit catty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh boys. And I could go for the thoroughly inappropriate puns, but I will withhold. Uh, from uh, he's showing <laughs> he's showing restraint. Aww. Yay. He's always really? showing restraint when you're around, because really, he does this all the time when no <laughs> one else is around. Wait, how do you know what I do when no one else is around? Torchara, are you spying on me? Uh, <laughs> the cameras. <laughs> oh my god, no, uh, Torchara went full big brother on me. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, what? Anything? No. Norman, Torterra is violating my public security and he's not even the president. <laughs> okay there, Steve. <laughs> yeah. oh. I mean, that's where it says. <laughs> hey, a Steve. Oh, I don't even think Maddie that? knows the story behind that. No. <laughs> no that, that's, oh, oh, God. No. Oh. There's, a, there's a reviewer wiki and apparently they've listed my name as Steve. <laughs> Yeah, so Silver is Steve. I Steve. Yeah, Steve. You will bow before the power of my Steviness. Anything to add, Steve? Yes, I serve the one true Master Merrick because my name is Steve. I found the page. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. I'm sorry. Oh, but, any- but seriously, Silver, anything more to add? Uh, Steve is a very nice name. It's just not mine. <laughs> I don't know who who did that, but it makes for a fu- but for a funny time. True, true. I'm giving Pony Life a little bit more time before to, to see if I really enjoy it. Or it's definitely not something I can trumpet alongside French with Magic because it's real high energy and silliness, but there's not a lot of depth to the characters. They talk about how much they love each other a lot. Like, a lot. Like, okay, we get it. Enough already. But it's it's at the same time, it's fun, it's interesting, and you give it a little time and I think you get used to the style. Except for how every all the all the perspective is flattened. So it's hard to tell where anything really is. I keep thinking when Pinky is cooking on a burner, it's angled towards her. If she just took a step forward, she'd plant her face into the burner. That's horrible. And it smells awful. <laughs> the, the art, the background art for this one is questionable at best. But that's all I've got. This is Steve. <laughs> hey, Steve, a sign and all. All righty then. And Tara, what do you think? Well, I'm not going to butcher it too hard because it's still only the first, uh, I guess you could say, two episodes. Because they did put it as episode one is part one, episode two is part two, which I don't know why they would put it in two parts. They could have just done it in one episode, but you know, that's a play for another time. But I, uh, it's all right, I guess. I mean, because all the slapstick and the uh, fast pace and the, uh, I wouldn't say action, but it kind of reminds me of the old season, like season one or season two of Friendship is Magic, where, you know, you see Fluttershy, which looks like she's beating up a bear to the point where she snaps the neck of a bear. <laughs> Ooh. I remember that one. I'm sorry. Did you just say beating off a bear? No, no. I didn't say yeah. beating <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, so, Tara, I am shocked and appalled. Well, I how... guess I've been hanging around with you too much. How dare. <laughs> That's a grisly image. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but in general, I, it's, this is all right. Yeah, I, I guess we have to bury it. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, this hero is a polar opposite. I knew that one and was coming suffering. next. And my suffering. I just knew that one was coming next. <laughs> <sighs> Welcome to the MPS show, Mandy, where puns are a requirement. <laughs> yeah, whatever you do, don't cave. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm at the oh, you'll give it. Or you'll give in to sloth. Ah, no, it's getting worse. Silver, I'm going to murder you with my bare hands. Ah, I'm doing it too. Steve, stop it. <laughs> but anywho, um, uh, Tara, you're done? Yes, I'm done. All right. So, Maddie, what do you think? 
as I said earlier, like there's a danger. Oh, it's not really a danger, but it, it's like when a new reiteration of a show comes along, you're going to automatically compare it to whatever reiteration came before it. It's only natural. We were talking about the the art briefly about it and the animation, and I actually think the animation in this show is actually decent. It, it's you know you've seen worse in this kind of style. Um. But what I will say it's like G four, even in the early scenes, it was it's very art nouveau in comparison to this, which is definitely more abstract and it's flat. So I think as different and as confusing as it can be, it's it's done deliberately. It's not done because lazy. It's done because this is more to do with minimalism and abstraction and stuff. Art Nouveau is more inspired by shapes of nature, whereas abstract art is more based on generic shapes and keeping things as, for want of a better word, juvenile, I guess, in in an art style sense. In all honesty, uh, lo- looking at the art style for this one, it reminded me of another Cartoon Network show from back in the days there's a few I can think of but the one that pops in my mind right now is Puffy Yami Yumi oh, oh yes Hi so, Hi Puffy Yami Yumi show what? not familiar with that one. Oh, really no me neither no. it's um, it's mm, okay mm. ah we've hit the generational divide really? I thought that I'm one was kind of I'm only a few years younger than you Steve <laughs> <laughs> that, that was Steve off time <laughs> oh, but, but okay. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Um. Mm. But the I think we mentioned earlier that the backgrounds of it. Uh, I think it was Tara said that it reminded them of, um, the Sonic cartoon. Not, not the good one. The other one. The <laughs> bad one. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. But I actually mentioned that in my video for Pony Life that. The backgrounds for Pony Life did remind me of the the early Sonic show. Like you think the things in the background, the only things that mattered were the ones that had um, contrasting colors to everything else. Everything else was just kind of drawn on the background, almost in like a nineteen uh, fifties kind of graphic style, where everything is implied instead of full of detail. This wasn't the first episode of Pony Life I watched. There's an episode where Rainbow Dash is challenged by Dish Water Slog. There we go. Uh, <laughs> That's his name, really? Yes. Dish Water oh, wow. Slog is his real name. And I don't I don't wanna go beyond this particular episode for your podcast, but it just seems like so far, any new character that is introduced is a very unlikable character. It's just an observation I kinda of realized yesterday i'm like every single new character that they've introduced has not been that very nice so <laughs> you know honestly, how many yeah. new characters have they uh, introduced because uh, i'm only on episode two and i think beyond that but silver have you seen all of it three uh i haven't seen all of it uh i will say the children characters may be rowdy but they aren't jerks as far as i know no that's well, there's it. dishwasher slog and then there's a cat called bubbles oh cat yeah oh i see what you mean there yeah 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 those are the best examples <gasps> but cat cat <laughs> cat oh yeah. boys the show itself as as jarringly different and confusing as it is when comparing it to G4, I am actually genuinely enjoying it. It's just a little bit of fun. You can just switch your your brain off for a few minutes. I mean, okay, it's it's very hyper, and you might have to take a... Maybe that's why there's a break between part one and part two, because you're going to have to go, yeah, I'm just going to stop and walk away and process what just happened, <laughs> and come back to it in a few minutes. Yeah, okay, I'm ready for part two now. <laughs> maybe that's I'm why... Ready for flutter- <laughs> I'm ready for Fluttershy to have a freaking line. Mm. Or <laughs> Jeez, it might be, be so like, because these episodes are so short, um, I'm of the the opinion that maybe it's just like a quick, uh, for want of a better phrase, it's just a quick through episode 
before the actual main subject <laughs> Yeah. Um, that shows in the, the ad breaks to say, oh great, hurry up, the real thing's about to start, but first we'll show you the <laughs> fake thing first. <laughs> uh, yeah. I see what you mean. What you mean. But anyway. Anywho, is that all? Yes. Alright then. And as for me, this first episode, uh, I'll put it this way. I'm glad that I watched G4 first, because if this was my first introduction to ponies, I won't be a fan. And that's not saying that this show is bad or whatnot, but it didn't hold my interest. One of the few things that helps me uh, decide if I want to watch a show or not is how good or how invested I am in watching a show. And for Pony Life, I thought it it didn't grab me. It didn't grab me like how Season 1, Episode 1 and 2 was. And... You know, honestly, I thought this episode was 22 minutes long, but uh, a Patreon supporter told me that, nah, it's not that long. It's rather short. Like, it's similar to one of the uh, Equestria Girls short, or, yeah, Equestria Girls shots. And I took a look at it again, and it's about 10 minutes long. And I was shocked by that. Like, I thought it was longer. But uh, going back to basics, the animation is not bad. The look of it, is decent and they learn a lot from G4 uh, this is not done by DHX Media or uh, whatever they're going to name now but this is done by Boulder Media and the look here uh, like right now I'm looking at Fluttershy and they don't go for the pastel outlines they go for black heart lines like a traditional cartoon would look like and I, I'm guessing that that's why uh, things seem jarring at first because they're kind of going back to basics in how they're drawn. And so the backgrounds, oh god, uh, it feels like it's rather, mm, you guys say it better than me, but I'm just gonna simplify things in my own shape and form. It just seems so rush. It just seems so um, hype stylized like this is uh, this was done on purpose because this is kind of the look that we're going for trying to be different from the main show and to say it's good or bad is kind of uh, redundant because we're already seeing it we're already watching it I guess we have to watch more but eh, maybe we'll get more episodes or better episodes in the future, I guess. So, other than that, uh, not a impressive first start, uh, boys. But anyway, uh, with that, those are my thoughts. And Silver, what do you have to do for next week? What do I have to do for next week? Well, let's see here. I've got to get my meals ready uh, for the week, and I've got to get going on backgrounds for the next video. Oh, what are we doing yes, next week? My bad. Don't put this all, don't put this all on me. Who do you like as destroyed my way of thinking for a bit oh dear don't be destroyed norman for we are going to switch gears and have a little fun with something different off the off the beaten path we are going to talk about a batman story <coughs> a batman story in which he battles the teenage mutant ninja turtle <coughs> dude i mean yeah that sounds cool yeah. <laughs> of course it's cool because i'm batman Wait, I, I'm trying to remember something. Did it the turtles appear in a game with the Batman? Or was it Mortal Kombat? It was Batman, right? Like DC it, it, Universe versus. Are you talking about Injustice? Yeah. Yes. Was it it? Yes. Yes. Oh, cool. So now we get a crossover proper in animated form. Ooh. So join us next next time for Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That would be cool. That would be cool. So that will be next week's thing. So yeah, join us for that one. That will be a lot of fun. I can tell. I can already tell. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themissionsgmail.com and you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me many places. You can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, every week I do Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight before a new episode, including Pony Life. 
You can find me on Ko-fi and Patreon under Silver Quill. You can help support my videos and comics that away. Uh, on Wednesdays, as we get when we get back into the comics, uh, I will post reviews on Equestria Daily. And if you do a search for a Silver Quill or After the Fact on YouTube, ye shall find me and abandon all hope, all ye who enter here. Awesome. Yes. 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 Awesome. Maybe. Awesome. Anyway, guys, if you can bear it. <laughs> oh no! Anyway, guys, go check Silver out. His content is always fun. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera One Three Two Four. Or they could just do a Google search, and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome, awesome! And Maddie, where can the good people find oh, you? My God. Ah! <laughs> Ka-ching! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you can find me on YouTube under the name Mad Munchkin. I am also on Devon Art and Twitter and on Facebook and on Patreon, and would really appreciate the support. Making content about anything and anything that takes my fancy, usually animated. So, yeah, come and check it out and listen to me complain about stuff. <laughs> Yay! I do that a lot. Everybody loves to hear complaints, especially customer service. Yeah, for sure. So, anyway, <laughs> also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on funnylive.com. Links are in the show notes. And talking about supporting the show, you can do so uh, for us at patreon.com slash MBS show. If you support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And you get a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Tristan, and also Master Flag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vecquil. I am the Torterra. And I'm Mad Munchkin. In name okay. only. <laughs> <laughs> it's and just a name. Is... Not in function. <laughs> also, Sylvia, you forgot your name's Steve, not Silver Quill. Yeah! <laughs> Oh god. But anywho, uh next week yeah, we'll next week more. Yay, awesome. See ya. Hey yes, Steve. Bye bye. Maddie, you wanna say goodbye? Don't tell me what to do, Steve. <laughs> oh my And with that the legendary Steve is born. Yeah, I think he might have broken the sound barrier. Yes, the sheer the sheer steviness of it all. Oh, <laughs> uh, I Stevie wonder. You cannot Steve off this devastation. <laughs> oh.